call. It, it's it's more to do with how much of a financial asset is somebody and how much shit can they put out until I, I can't handle dealing with them anymore, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap up the Nanny Wall talk and the StarCraft 2 talk, and let's move into some Diablo 3, Reaper of the Souls launch, which happened late last night. I think there was a launch party even uh, over in... Irvine, I believe. Uh, I know a lot of people are tweeting like day nine. Those guys, they were all, all uh, you know, bitter, all at a launch party over there. But uh, I was watching Kriparian play some last night, and I kind of want to get your thoughts. Have you got, any of you guys got a chance to, to play the game yet? Steven, you, you played Reaper of the Souls at all? Richard? I'm not going to I, 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 I feel, you, you set me up, Chan, man. You set me up. This is bullshit. I, I fucking hate Diablo three. I think I think uh, it's oh, it's <laughs> okay. it, no, it's just it's it's. Well, I don't like to badmouth Blizzard, and I know you've got a special relationship it, with Blizzard, <laughs> but it's a piece of shit game. Okay, it's, so it's just boring. So, it's, so let's fun. talk about this one. All right, let's talk about this expansion. It's a, there's supposed to be some changes to this. Um, you know, for A, the auction house is gone. B, I think the adventure mode is a little bit more wide open, sandbox like, more so than just like this very linear, you know, this linear mode type of thing. And um, so, you know, so there, there are definitely some changes to this, but it's not going to encourage you guys to play this game at all, or Richard. Uh, no, look, look. Here's the thing, right? It, it, the problem I've got with it is that you're just running along, uh, spamming left click and occasionally pressing buttons, dude, you're and your reward, loud, dude. your reward oh, sorry, for that was doing it uh, a million times uh, in a row is that you get to do it again at a harder level. And the only fucking thing that you get as a reward for this is virtual fucking loot, which is just numbers, which you can then get better. It's retarded. It's like I say, it's virtual the equivalent. Loot. I mean, that's like the basis of a lot of these. No, 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 no. Every single that, MMORPG is... Exactly. Ever. No, Every MMO is no. like that. It's, like... it's not even that cerebral an experience, though. Like with an MMO, like if you've ever played like a fucking, you know, raiding party and you've had to beat a boss in WoW and you've got to do teamwork yeah. and you've got to time things and coordinate shit. In Diablo, you are mashing buttons like a 14 year old getting his first touch of titty at the prom. It's bullshit. It's it's <laughs> there's nothing to it at all. Uh, and it's like one of the least complex games I've ever played. And it, I find it incredibly dull. And I just don't get, like, how... It, it's turned people into fucking lab rats. Like, literally, you're just... You know, you're, you're just there. Like, this is how I get the cheese. I press the button, and I get the cheese. And if I want more cheese, I press the button again. It's rubbish. It's... That's, I, I don't okay. understand why so many people like the game. And I personally don't think that... Um, you well, know, there are no a lot of people that have been complaining the, about the game. Let's be real, right? I mean, well, good, 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 good for them. I would, I would argue that they're probably entertained by like custard pie fights and and other stuff that the human brain should have out evolved by now, and that's fine. Good for them, but uh, it's definitely not my thing, and I don't think an overpriced expansion pack uh, is really going to uh, <laughs> right. to, to fix the core problem. Steven, what do you think of Diablo three? Um, I was never a fan of Diablo 3 because I thought the um, the stat system was incredibly simplistic. It seemed really dumb that every class pretty much just farmed one stat plus vitality. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even remember the four classes, but I remember that was pretty much like... Uh, it was It was always a shame when gear came out or whatever. Like, I was... Originally, I was hoping you'd be, like, min-maxing. Like, me and uh, Phantom Lord and... The other two... I don't even remember who else was playing us, but we did, like, a lot of theory crafting and shit before the game launched about how we would build our shit and... It was kind of lame where, like, gear dropping. It's like, how much intelligence does it have? And they're, like, 420 or whatever. And like, oh, okay, I don't need it. And, like, that was it because the stat system was so incredibly simplistic in that game. What about the um, what about the game mechanics? Like, that's obviously something that bothers Richard. <laughs> I mean, if you don't like a hack and slash, you're never going to like a hack and slash. Exactly. But, I, but, I mean, like, the game, the game in terms of just, like, raw mechanics, like, how it looks and feels, like, you're talking about, like, how the engine handles the shit. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels and runs really smoothly. It looks nice. Like, I mean, you kill shit relatively easily. You can mash your buttons. Everything responds really well. Um, it didn't seem laggy to me at any point in time. Um, I, I mean, the mechanics of the game felt pretty good if you're, like, if you're into that. It was just the gameplay itself to me felt really shallow, um, especially with no... Have they implemented PvP or dueling yet? Um, I don't think they've been. I don't think so. I think it's still... Okay, well, that would have been, like, the main... It's that still would have been something like they're the talking about, thing. for sure. PvP yeah, Arena and, and ladders. That, that and should have been in so long ago. There's so much that should have been in the game on launch, obviously. I've said this so many times before. You know, like, Paragon levels probably should have been in a launch, maybe. Yeah. Although those are really just an excuse to grind levels more. It wasn't really... I don't know if I would say Paragon levels was new content to the game. Um, 
I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not. I don't know. I just I was never a big fan of Diablo three. I felt like the gameplay itself was overall very shallow. It seems like they've added more content, but they haven't increased the depth or complexity of the game at all. All they've did is just add more. Like if you've got a if you've got like a, a pool that's like ten by ten that's like three feet deep. Instead of like deepening the pool, they just like added more space to it. That's also you know. So like I don't know if this adventure mode is going to be any cool. I, admittedly, I'm a little bit ignorant on the adventure mode. I read a little bit about it. Um, but I'm not familiar with exactly how it works. I don't know if it's going to be cool or not. With no PvP and what I feel is a fundamentally yeah. flawed equipment system, I just don't see it becoming that interesting. Yeah, but, but I mean, there are people that play it and have fun with it. So Yeah, yeah I'm actually a little surprised that PvP uh, was, wasn't added to this. Uh, I, I saw that it wasn't going to be added to just in, in some of the, the pre-launch reviews because I feel like it would be, the, it'd be huge. I think PvP in Diablo would be amazing. Um, but, I mean, it, it doesn't it, have it, enough it, customization. I mean, like, it does in terms matter. of loot I mean, and items. Like, if you're gonna breathe life like, into something like that, that's you know, that has yeah, but I, I, I really agree. critical I, about. I, I, like, I, I think agree. PvP would have been a very logical decision to to include in the launch of this expansion. So that's, I don't know. Hopefully, it'll come soon. I guess the next expansion, like it's next year. I guess. Uh, I don't think it's gonna come in some kind of patch or anything like that. So I think it's gonna uh, be. You're in paying the... for that shit. <laughs> You're paying for that shit. You better believe it. Oh man! All right. Well, let's move on and let's talk. Okay, let's talk some League of Legends. So, Richard, you got to lead us here because uh... no, no, no. Fuck that, man. This is your show. You're the oh, host, man. right? So, what, what story do you want to talk about? Well, Chandler? I was talking to you about most of them. I mean, the the the, yeah, yeah. the, the thing that was that caught my I the most. Was, uh, I think there's, there's a couple things, right? Scar Scar actually. Um, being benched, I think, from Dignitas was one of the big ones, and then I was what? I was seeing some of the EG, just the EG visa issues, right? I just I was seeing some of that too. But I know you have some other stuff. Just being following the League of Legends uh, community yeah. a lot, lot closer. Well, what, so. come on, t- t- I'll follow your lead, brother. I'll dance to your tune. What all do right, you let's talk, talk. Let's talk Scar first. All right. Okay. Uh, Scar obviously has been the, I think the, uh, the the forefront yeah you know, the guy at the forefront of team dignitas for a long time since i can even remember honestly uh so having a bench scar i think is going to be a big deal and i don't know the specifics about like how his play has been recently but i'm i'm guessing it's been it's got to be pretty bad for them to, to bench him so why don't you give us some insight into that richard well i while i certainly couldn't talk uh you know in sort of any great depth about you know the intricacies of his play i think I think I think for that a better equipped person would be Mon- Monte Cristo, yeah, sure. um, and I'm certainly not him. Uh, but what I would say is he's certainly not the scar we've seen in previous seasons. Um, I think his limited champ pool has really caught up with him, uh, and in the current meta where uh, assassins uh, haven't really uh, got the same sort of place anymore, uh, his particular style of play has really fallen by the wayside, and I think it's been evident in Team Dignitas' play uh, this season. You know, he's not been a commanding presence. Uh, There's just no getting away from that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that would be the nicest way of of putting it. Um, (laughs) I I, I, I think they've got issues in the team Um, anyway, because I never liked the idea of, you know, when they were chopping and changing the team, I personally felt Kiwi Kid should have just been out altogether. Uh, he certainly was awful in the top lane, and they did the right thing in replacing him. I, I, you know, I couldn't even remember the last time he won his lane in the laning phase. He was terrible. Moving him to support, what I, it seems to be working, um, but I, I'm not too sure. I, 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 I think maybe they could get a better support, somebody that could help. I'm a cutie pie who's a fantastic AD carry, uh, really, you know, realize his potential. So anyway, to to, to stay on point about Skara. Um, you know, the, the the team, I think, have obviously identified that's where the change needs to be made. And I know Odie and everyone in Team Dignitas will have made this decision very reluctantly because whenever they want to do any media work, it's Scara that they put out front and center. He's the most, probably the most articulate mm-hmm. on the team. Easily. I think he's got the most easy charm, if you want to call it that. Uh, certainly when HBO did that real sports special, that made him look like a bit of a fucking loser, if we're honest about it, which, you know, sh- shame. No, seriously, shame on you, HBO, for that hatchet job. But, um, you know, he- he's the go-to guy for Dignitas, and he's 
you know, well loved by the fans. Mm -hmm. um, everyone involved in league and, and the LCS broadcasts love him. So to bench him is huge. And I'm pretty sure they, they haven't done this lightly. Uh, it makes me inclined to think maybe the rest of the team have said, as much as we love William, you know, but that's, speculation. Yeah. Yeah, but that's speculation on my part. I just can't see. Uh, if it was down to Odie and Odie alone, I think he'd st I'd stick with his man. Especially in a fairly meaningless split. Well, all you've got to do is stave off relegation, which Dignitas should be capable of doing. Uh, the replacement that they've brought in uh, is a chap called Golden Glue, um, who's got a ridiculous name, Grayson Gilmer. Grayson Golden Glue Gilmer. Like, it's that's just as well... Not, that's an awesome name. Yeah, it, I don't know. I, I It sounds fake or maybe... <laughs> fake? God. Yeah, you know, like, he bought okay, that name right, on right, eBay sure. or some shit. Or, either that or he's a porn star. I, I don't know. Oh, come on, so, man. All right. Me, uh, Grayson Gilmer? Are you fucking serious? Anyway, so he's from Complexity Red. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's going to start and he's going to fit straight into the team. Scar is still benched. He's still going to be a sub. I imagine if it doesn't work out, he'll find himself filling in while they look for another long-term replacement. But ultimately, uh, I, I think that there's a lot of players who've been around since the beginning of the game that are really struggling to keep up with it. There's a new generation of players coming through. Um, and I I'm not really going to follow the party line because everyone was saying to me, oh, go on and tell everyone how it's a step down in terms of ability i i, I don't know if i can say that because i don't know enough about good old grayson but um what i do know is scara wasn't working currently and you know there's got to be better options out there for a team of uh, dignitas's caliber yeah so steven you know playing some league of legends and i know you know you were trying to trying to be part of a team you know for a while um when you're ever when you're benched from a team like that do you just lose all motivation to even try to, to I guess, get I back on the team? I couldn't even begin. To, the teams that I played were all super yeah, minor. We just played ranked fives. I can never even tell you. Um, it sounds like he got imagine. benched from the team, but he'll look for new opportunities afterwards. So, oh, okay, okay. So I can't really. I don't know anything switch, else about whether he sucks now or not. I, some people in the subreddit no, were saying just, that it's, it's not his general. fault that the team is getting fucked. So, like, I don't even know. It's just more in general that, um, you know, how motivated are are, are guys when they're benched to. You know, I'm sure. a, that's a lot less pressure, right? To get to to have to. I mean, you have some room. To I mean, improve, I'm sure this is. And... I'm sure it's like a crazy variable. I'm sure it gets a case by case basis. If you feel like you're really good and you want to go to another team, then they keep playing. If they were already fizzling out, then maybe they don't give a fuck. I mean, I'm sure it's it's crazy variable in a case by case. Mm. Okay, Richard, mm. how many how many um st how many instances has there been where a player's been benched and then he's you know. While he's been benched, he's been able to like really take you a step know, back and improve and I, then get back on the team. Uh, do you want to know? Do you want to know what's really interesting uh, in League of Legends? Uh, w certainly uh, in other games, I think the first time you're benched uh, is generally the sign that you are a talent in decline, and you know yeah, you should think about I mean. retirement or transitioning mm -hmm. into another role. But what's interesting with League of Legends is all of the people that needed, in the eyes of the community, to be benched. Uh, so let's talk Hotshot GG yeah, on CLG, right? Let's example. talk about Hotshot. Now, this guy, talk about limited champ pool. He had fuck all <laughs> going on, uh, poor mechanics. One of the most embarrassing things I ever saw, I think, was I think it was a TSM game where he tried to play Karthus top. Uh, it was absolutely horrible. The video's on YouTube. It is beyond bad. Um, and, you know... I. He needed to go so the team could improve. But then when CLG recently ran into um, some staffing problems with the whole Dexter visa problem, Hotshot GG come out of retirement, relaxed, pressure off, away from the hate. The community welcomed him back with open arms after telling him he was a fucking scrub and a piece of shit for God knows how long. Now he was like the messiah. Uh, and he came back and he played in Italy, which of course was the champion. He was best known for pioneering. And he did really well, and they won their games. Hotshot GG, man, mm -hmm. the comeback kid. And he looked more relaxed with it, and he, he looked an uh, entirely better player. TSM, Reginald. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing. Reginald was so weak towards the end of his playing career, he pretty much tethered the odd one as almost like a second support. Like, the odd one never strayed too far from mid. He had to babysit Reginald because everything in TSM hinged on Reginald doing well in his lane and getting lots of kills. And it really hindered the team overall. When they brought in Bjergsen after a wonderful trip to Disneyland, 
um and they they deemed that because that's how you poach guys that's how you poach players these days guys take them to disneyland like this you know they brought in a supremely talented player uh and and that was it so reginald yeah. took the step back it freed up the odd one the team was playing with new confidence but then reginald had to come back when bjergsen was out with an illness or whatever but guess what reginald came back played well the team won their games reginald relaxed happier uh away from the pressure away from the hate mm -hmm. Yep. I, you know, I'm just saying there's this pattern. Um, it didn't quite work out like that for St. Vicious, though. And I hate, no, no, I, no. And I hate to say it because he's like no. my favorite. Uh, but um, yeah, it didn't quite work out like that for him. Uh, the support thing was short-lived and didn't quite work out. And I was really confident it would, but it didn't. So I, I, who knows? I mean, I've just been told by my sources that he's going to coach. Uh, oh, I think that'll really? keep him in. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. uh, and I've got no reason to doubt that. Um, so I, I think that's going to be really good. I think, uh, you know, that'll keep him involved with the players, involved in the scene. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll probably come back at some point. Someone will need a rest. Someone will need a break. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he'll probably be better for it. I, I genuinely think League is such a pervasive game. You end up tunneling and you get sucked into the Reddit bullshit and sucked into the performance and the pressure. Sometimes uh, a rest will, will do you the power of good. So... Long term, who knows? Maybe there's a comeback in 2015 where he's suddenly the best mid laner in the world, even better than Faker. Yeah, that'd be definitely interesting. It'd be it'll be cool to see if I don't know. Some teams might have more of a dynamic rotation after a while. You know, like depending on you know have strengths and weaknesses based on some rotations. I know it's really hard to do because you have to have the, the right chemistry and that sort of thing. But um, that'd be kind of kind of neat to have like a six man rotation versus five. Okay, let's see. Moving on, uh, League of Legends. I think the next thing. Forget the Visa things. I mean, we've. I think Visa things are just like happen all the time, so it's not really a big big thing. Uh, we want to talk about the Nip thing, right? Uh, there's some controversy going on with some of the Nip players. And, yeah. Uh, I. I it's, it, yeah. I mean, basically. Well, I, here's the thing. Is it controversy? I guess would be the, the 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 first question. Like, or should it be rather? Uh, for those that didn't catch the story. There were some NIP players. Uh, they played a lobby, uh, sorry, a private game, and they were all in the lobby with supposed friends and yeah. people they'd invited there. Mm -hmm. uh, the support player, Miffy, drops the end bomb, um, saying there's so many niggers in, in the lobby. Uh, quote, you can see the screenshots for yourself uh, on, on eSports Heaven. Um, and... In, a, a, in what may or may not be the same lobby, it's not quite clear from the screenshots. Um, Nuke Duck says, get cancer and die. Fucking trash Jews. I will gas your families. Um, and this is between friends? This is between friends. So <laughs> oh everyone who's in the I mean, lobby... It sounds like some shit I could say to my friends. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Now, everyone in the lobby has been invited there specifically to play with the players. Everyone My should gosh. know each other. But someone screenshotted this and then waited a few days to leak it publicly on an uh, alternate Reddit account. Uh, we picked up the story, and because we're desperate for clickbait and have no journalistic standards, we decided to run the story. Um, and we did, and we put it out there into the public domain. And then the NIP managers basically responded with this, the following statement. It's only short. Uh, we feel that the screenshots taken out of a custom game have been blown out of proportion and were posted with malicious intent towards the players in question. However, we in ninjas in pajamas do not condone such behavior from our players and they have been reprimanded accordingly. We yeah. expect our players to behave like the pillars of the professional community that they should strive to be. And basically it blew up on Reddit when it, when it went out into the public and everyone's been talking about it. Uh, we've reached out to Riot for comments. So far, nothing. Um, in the past, there's been, uh, if you like, precedent that Riot have banned players for, for less than this. Uh, year bans have been dished out to toxic competitors, but that's on hmm. the basis of persistent solo queue interactions. Um, the, a lot of the community were outraged and are calling for Riot to act. I don't know how it's going to go. But I think the real debate here is, should something that's happened in private effectively, should yeah, we right. be outraged by it once it becomes public? No, agreed. I mean, that's... Wait, just to, just to clarify, 
one of them was streaming a private game. Is that correct? No, no, no. Or, or one it of their friends. One, so one of these guys actually yeah, posted it. One of these it guys. In one of these guys oh, literally. Man, that's just shitty. I mean. Yeah, yeah. I, one of these guys literally just screenshotted it the minute they said anything just, and was waiting oh, for God. it. <laughs> okay. So much for friends, man. Um, but but equally, here's the thing. You could argue that maybe he's gone into that game as a friend. And then has been mortally offended by the anti-Semitic and racist yeah. content he's seen in the lobby, and has decided to do something about it. I mean, we can't speak. To yeah, the sure. I mean, intentions. I get, I get that, but it could also be taken in this context of it's just a bunch of friends that are joking around, and and you know the, the context is like that. You can't really tell by that that screenshot there, right? Um, mm. And obviously, everybody is going to take it from the <laughs> from uh, from the most extreme standpoint, and and. Uh, it's kind of what's happening here, so uh, pretty bad, pretty, pretty, pretty uh, I mean, unfortunate situation. So, I, I, I wanted to ask Stephen because I know he's been on the receiving end of a community backlash for saying things that they deem unpalatable. Um, so, what, what's your take on it? I mean, I could understand being upset if it's done publicly. Like, if you do it on a stream, like when I was streaming shit and I was doing stuff, I guess I could understand. Um, even though I necessarily disagree that I can understand being um, being upset by shit there, but for it to take screenshots and shit out of private games, like I think that's really fucked. Um, I don't think you should expect anybody to be 100% PC at every single. Mo Maybe when you're in the public eye, sure, but like when you're just playing private games with friends, I think that's. A, I think at that point you're getting a little bit ridiculous. I don't think anybody on that team is getting paid enough to be a 24/7 representative of whatever team they're on. I think that's a little bit fucking stupid. Hmm. Uh, the guy that know, um, the guy that leaked those yeah. screenshots should be lynched uh, mm. or killed in real life. I don't know. That guy's a fucking asshole. It's pretty stupid that you would do that. Here's the thing, though. Okay, let's say it was a Jewish guy that leaked screenshots. Do we still think he's an asshole? I mean, even if it was a Jewish black man, like just handle it there. So it, it, if you're... handle it there. Yeah, like, yeah, just yeah, say, yeah, hey, dude, I don't it, appreciate you that. You handle it there. Yeah, like, you don't yeah, have to freaking you, leak it out something... and just like. And if like they continue to be assholes and shit, then I mean maybe. I mean, at that point, I just wouldn't hang out with them anymore. But, but I mean, is it like it's just like at that like you you're getting into so much fucking weird territory there when you're like imagine that like imagine you've got like a professional player and like all of a sudden his girlfriend posts something publicly like I got into a fight with my boyfriend last night and he pushed me you know like over like shit like shit like that like it's just weird like at that point like why mm -hmm. why the fuck are you like making every single part of their private life now is public for all of us to evaluate like, that, like nobody's an angel like that gets really fucked up to a point you no know? and so like when you're getting to points where like well when we were playing a private game last night like he said nigger or, or made like anti-semitic jokes or whatever like doesn't like talk to them about it there like we it, nobody's getting paid enough in fucking esports except for a very few amount of people to, to have every single part of their personal life outed publicly and then to have all of that evaluated on like that's just, really really it just encourages paranoia too man. if Everybody's it was gonna be yeah, paranoid about done, who they play if it was with done on stream if it was and... done on twitter if it was in like a public ladder game or a public matchmaking game sure but when you're starting to um w when you're starting to get into taking like private comments and in private games and making that shit public like it's just it's a whole fucking can of worms that nobody should have to deal with it's really fucking disgusting in my opinion oh i i, I agree i you know i see both sides of the argument um i, I i've never liked the way that when you become a celebrity or, or whatever you want to uh, term it it's like you've signed a Faustian pact, and the, the 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 price for that is you are no longer held up to the same standards as everybody else. Uh, yes. And in fact, the people that are applying the standards to you very often will have no intention of adhering to you know those same standards. Uh, and yeah, I think I think that's ridiculous. I think that's fairly um, outrageous. But equally, there's no getting away from the 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 counter argument to that, which is. Once something goes into the public domain, uh, it's kind of how you react to it. It took yeah. the NIP players a while to offer an apology. And like I'm not saying I want to see the culture of apologies. Like, you know, Tiger Woods apologizing for having sex. Like, why are you apologizing to me? Like, I don't care. You know, like, people apologize for shit and, uh, you know, all the time. And I definitely don't want to see that culture enter esports, but but there's an argument that's already here. And the players were really slow. They were like arguing on Twitter saying, we've done nothing wrong, we've done nothing wrong. And that just antagonized the mob. You know, it was <laughs> like in Frankenstein when they all got to burn him down and they're there going, no, 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 he's gentle, honest. Like, Fuck it, we're just going to burn him anyway. That's, that's what we're here to do. 
and that's just going to make you make us burn you as well. So that, that you know, they should have probably just issued an apology straight away, let it blow over. I don't think the management have really helped them out. Like, the, I, I you know, I woke up to a bizarre Skype tirade from their manager who gave me the statement saying I'd spun facts, you know, like, because he was like, I didn't know my statement was going to become the story. Like, how narcissistic is that? It isn't. <laughs> I put your statement in or I don't. People right. are still talking about the screenshots, right? But, you know, fuck it. Nip, nip management has been a car crash for, uh, for a while, and I'm hoping Emil sorts that out now that he's the new CEO because uh, they've had a pretty rough few days. I mean, you know, there was an article as well just today about their CSGO players getting death threats. So it's a tough time to be a nip player, and shit like this definitely doesn't help it. But, yeah, I, I, see, I see both sides of the argument, man. I just think, I don't know. I don't think – I wouldn't say those kind of things anyway, so it's very hard for me to sort of rationalize why you would. But I am a big believer in freedom of speech, obviously. So maybe that's an issue. But I, I guess once it's public, you are a role model in a game that's predominantly played yeah. by kids. All right. Well, let's wrap things up. Let's uh, let's wrap that topic up and let's go into a break and then we'll be back with some own 3D.TV returning talk. This should be a good one. So we'll be right back, guys. We'll see you in a second. 